A new batch of Type 055 destroyers is about to enter service, yet they lack the rumored electromagnetic railguns and nuclear propulsion systems. Even their appearance shows little change. Does this mean our 10,000-ton destroyers have undergone an upgrade in vain? Recently, photos of a new Type 055 destroyer undergoing sea trials have circulated widely online. Judging by its overall shape and basic layout, this is likely the lead ship of China's second batch of Type 055 destroyers, with many netizens referring to it as the Dongguan. Based on the testing cycle for Chinese naval vessels, its official commissioning date is indeed drawing near. Speculation about the second batch of 055s began during their construction phase. Some predicted electromagnetic railguns, others anticipated laser weapon systems, and a few even speculated about nuclear propulsion. After all, many envisioned next generation vessels as embodying revolutionary technological leaps. Reality, however, appears far more pragmatic. Based on currently circulating photos and various sources, this batch of 055S shows no revolutionary changes in appearance compared to the first batch. In fact, the modifications are quite restrained. The most noticeable alteration is in the portholes. The new batch has reduced the number from 15 small portholes to 11 larger ones. Don't underestimate this adjustment, it directly expands the field of view within the command center, offering tangible improvements for onboard command and observation operations. Another detail lies at the number one funnel, a backward sloping cowl has been added. In fact, this design isn't unique to the second batch, it was already adopted starting with the fifth vessel, the Dalian, in the first batch. Its function is highly practical, directing exhaust gases toward the stern to prevent dense smoke from impairing bridge operations and equipment corrosion. The disappearance of the ladder on the main gun likely indicates further automation, reducing manual intervention. Beyond these visible changes, reports suggest the second batch of 055s may have upgraded to more advanced radar systems. While no external changes to the radar modules are apparent, if rumors hold true about installing all gallium oxide T R modules, this would represent a qualitative leap in the 055's detection and electronic warfare capabilities. Regarding the much-discussed electromagnetic railguns and laser weapons, this batch of Type 055 destroyers indeed lacks such armaments. However, this does not preclude their future integration. Modern warship designs typically incorporate upgrade provisions, with midlife overhauls and retrofits generally occurring 10-15 years after commissioning. At that stage, mature new weapon systems can be seamlessly installed. Currently, China's electromagnetic railguns and laser weapons remain in the experimental phase and have not yet reached the maturity required for mass deployment. In this regard, the U.S. Ford-class aircraft carrier serves as a cautionary tale. Its excessive reliance on unproven technologies led to frequent malfunctions, resulting in combat effectiveness that actually fell short of the more conservatively designed Nimitz-class carriers. Our military has always prioritized equipment reliability and operational readiness rates, refusing to sacrifice actual deployment capability for the sake of paper specifications. In reality, for the current Chinese Navy, even if the second batch of 055 destroyers sees only marginal performance improvements, the sheer increase in numbers represents a significant combat capability boost. While 8055s are now in service, a seemingly substantial number, this remains insufficient for breaking through the first island chain and projecting power into the open seas. Factoring in routine rotation, maintenance, and training cycles, Typically only four to six of these eight warships are operationally available at any given time. To maintain a sustained presence across the Western Pacific, Indian Ocean, and beyond, at least 15 to 20 10,000-ton class destroyers are required. Therefore, continuing the construction of the Type 055, even without major modifications, addresses a critical shortfall in the Chinese Navy's blue water operational capabilities. Thus, while the second batch of Type 055 destroyers may not be as CFI as rumored, they signify the maturation and sustained development of China's large surface warship construction system, a milestone potentially more significant than any single flashy technological breakthrough. Looking further ahead reveals that the second batch of Type 055S carries implications far beyond individual combat effectiveness. The Chinese Navy is undergoing a critical transition from near-sea defense to far-sea protection, with every shipbuilding advancement closely aligned with the nation's overall maritime strategy. As the current backbone of naval surface vessels, the sustained construction and iteration of the Type 055 directly impact the quality of aircraft carrier strike group formation and the Navy's ability to project power in distant waters. In the current international landscape, 
the strategic importance of the Western Pacific, Indian Ocean, and even the waters east of the Middle East and Africa to China's energy supply routes and overseas interests is increasingly evident. Without a sufficient number of high-quality destroyers, aircraft carriers cannot venture forward with confidence. Sustained long-range escort missions become unfeasible and maritime influence remains unattainable. Therefore, the unveiling of the new batch of type 055 destroyers first confirms the Chinese Navy's full endorsement of the ship's foundational design. Since the initial batch has proven its worth, continuing with the mature design and accelerating production represents the most pragmatic and efficient choice. On the other hand, naval vessel upgrades have always followed the principle of incremental development. Minimal external changes do not imply a lack of substantive internal enhancements. Beyond the potential adoption of gallium oxide radar technology, the second batch of Type 055 destroyers is highly likely to feature significant yet invisible optimizations in command systems, data link compatibility, electronic countermeasures, and anti-submarine warfare capabilities. For instance, upgrades to combat system software versions, enhanced coordinated engagement capabilities, and even support for hypersonic missiles may already be embedded within the new vessels. While these internal evolutions lack the visual impact of electromagnetic railguns, they exert a decisive influence on overall combat effectiveness. Moreover, the ship's network architecture, power distribution, and redundant cooling system designs lay the groundwork for future integration of high-energy weapons. When electromagnetic railguns or laser weapons become truly mature and reliable, these reserved interfaces and capacity will enable swift activation, allowing the Type 055 to undergo smooth mid-life upgrades without requiring hull redesign. We cannot judge a warship's value solely by the presence or absence of revolutionary weapons, nor should we underestimate the wisdom of China's defense industry in leveraging mature technologies to control risks. The U.S. Zumwalt-class destroyer exemplifies how pursuing radical innovation can lead to project setbacks. Conversely, the Arleburg-class destroyers though showing limited changes per generation, have become the U.S. Navy's most reliable backbone through continuous refinement and mass production. Looking back, while eight Type 055 destroyers represent a significant fleet, this number falls far short of achieving comprehensive coverage when considering the Chinese Navy's need to simultaneously support missions across the North Sea, East Sea, and South Sea fleets. Additionally, the Navy must equip aircraft carrier strike groups with regional air defense command ships and provide escort support for distant sea task forces. Typically, a destroyer spends roughly one-third of its operational lifespan undergoing training, maintenance, or upgrades, limiting the number immediately deployable to hotspots. Thus, constructing the second batch of Type 055S is not redundant labor but a necessary step to steadily expand high-end combat capabilities. Thus, while the second batch of Type 055 destroyers may not fulfill some military enthusiasts' visions of science fiction warships, they reflect the confidence and patience of China's shipbuilding industry, avoiding blind pursuit of novelty or hasty adoption of unreliable technologies, instead adhering to the rhythm of equipping one generation developing the next, and pre-researching the following. This approach uses mass production to solidify the foundation of a blue-water navy, a grounded and forward-thinking approach befitting a major naval power.